very appropriate. I don't know if you can hear in the background sirens, police sirens, and an ambulance and a fire truck. Hopefully everybody's okay. Hopefully nobody's dead. Hopefully nobody's dead who doesn't know the Lord. You're going to see the thumbnail. And um, obviously. Very recently, a uh, neighbor of ours, we uh, looked upon her just very, very, very recently. And apparently this neighbor of ours, a widowed woman, a single mother of a son, apparently she fell down a flight of stairs, right? Or slipped on a banana peel in the living room and hit her head on the co end of the coffee table, right? Or, or another one is that, uh, you know, the showers have those things where you lift up the, the head on the shower so you can wash your back and backside. You see, I also apparently she was in the shower and it, it came off and bopped her in the head, right? Today, I'd like to talk to you a little bit about this epidemic, the abuse of women, the abuse of women. Our American culture, our American society is so perverse, so grotesque, that it, it, it's so, it's so Jesuit, it's so Jesuit, um, openly, openly, Condemning the abuse and violence towards women. Amen. But yet at the same time, America, through predictive programming, through advertisement, through these uh, um, deplorable, aberrant Christian women preachers, okay, like Butch Myers, and here on YouTube, you can just, a whole lot of them. Um, our, our country, our culture, openly expresses, you know, no violence against women. And amen, amen, hallelujah. Our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, our God, and his word is not for the abuse of women whatsoever as a husband smacking a wife or a man because he's a little irritated uh, punching a woman in the face. No, no, no. But see, the Jesuits have pushed this agenda of feminism. And I mean, you look on TV today, apparently, uh, you know, near the fall of the Roman Empire, um, I've heard this once before, and it's so true. You can judge a society on how it entertains itself. Okay? The Romans, for example, at first they were all about pure athletic events like wrestling, and not wrestling like today, but wrestling matches and Olympic type stuff of runnings and running and that kind of stuff. And what did it escalate onto? Oh, feeding the Church of God to the lions, the gladiators. Remember those? We don't have gladiators today, Brad. Well, they don't die, no, but we do have gladiators today. Absolutely we do. How so? Mixed martial arts. You know, UFC. And the most grotesque thing of all, women. Mixed martial artists. Women fights in UFC. There you go. There you go. Yeah, there, there, there you go. Talking about a woman uh, wearing that, which pertains onto a man. <laughs> okay, I, I'm scanning my notes. I think I, I have that written down here somewhere. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. And just like in Rome, gladiators, you know, who were prisoners, uh, uh, deserters, or ex-soldiers and stuff like that. They also had female gladiators back in Rome. Today. We in America? How does this country entertain itself? Oh, with football, baseball, basketball, hockey, mixed martial arts, pornography, these 
Ridiculous. <laughs> Ridiculous. Not reality, reality TV shows. Feminist-laden TV shows. Like Heartland. A. Eh? <laughs> but yet, with feminism being pushed so predominantly by the Jesuits in this country, and yet, rightfully so, amen, shunning and abhors violence against women. But yet, the Jesuits are pushing with their feminism the, the woman to usurp authority over the man, to take the place of man. You got to remember, feminism teaches God, woman, child, pet, man. Where the scripture says that it is God, man, woman, child. Pet doesn't enter into the equation. Okay? Man is to be the head of the wife. Well, what about single women? What about single women? What about single women? See, what our Lord teaches us through the scriptures as applicable between a relationship between a man and a wife is applicable in application and practice on how we as man are to treat woman in general. Okay? Do you understand that? Now, We've, we've talked about this before. In the description box, there will be primarily three videos, maybe a couple few, as the Lord will uh, lead and guide. But um, we've talked about a uh, godly woman, the woman, woman of God. And also we have touched on this in the video, Cold, Very Cold, where we, go, where we look up those videos where we get a little bit more in depth and about the woman of God and stuff like that. This video is not aimed at you, the woman. This video is aimed at you so-called men. Okay? I'm going to go right on record and telling you straight out the gate, I do not believe at all, at all, in striking a woman with the exception of if a woman comes at me, for example, with a butcher knife, okay, um, that, that, that's different. That's different, okay? Uh, women, you're going to go at a man with a knife or baseball bat. Um, if, now, if it's to defend yourself against an insane guy who looks at you as a piece of meat and treats you like an animal, um, run, okay? Get in your car and run. Um, Self-defense is okay. But if, you know, I've heard, I've seen, okay? I've heard of women. I, I have heard of women getting so angry at their boyfriends or at their husbands, virtually unprovoked, and yet grabbing the kitchen knife or grabbing a weapon to go after the husband or after the boyfriend, unprovoked. I have also seen, I have seen provoked women who will get right up face to face with a man. Okay? So close that they're actually, when they're talking, spinning. Hmm. But see, that, that is no cause still for you, man, so-called, to lose your temper. temper. It's like, well, and I, I just had to. She was in my face. And da 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 Yeah, yeah, but that doesn't give you an excuse to strike a woman. And what do they say? What do they say? She was asking for it. Or it's her fault because she got into my face. And me as the man, I got to stand my ground and smack her? Hmm. What, does, what does the scriptures say about these kinds of things? Hmm. And, and plus that's totally Adamic, you know, Adamic meaning, well, it's the woman's fault that I hit her. No. What, have you no rule over your own spirit? You angry, bro? Please, 
Get your authorized version of the scriptures, the King James Version, commonly called. Follow me along, word for word, verse by verse. Check me out. Make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Check me out. Make sure I'm not lying to you and taking things out of context. Check me out. Follow me along, okay? My mother was an abused woman. A survivor. My wife was an abused woman. Her two former husbands, who are both dead and in hell. Okay? Uh, my wife was an abused woman. I counseled abused women before. Very quickly before we get... Oh, uh, get ready because we're going to be reading in Genesis chapter 2. Okay, we have to go over this. Like I said, this, this video is not aimed at you, the woman. Though we are going to address the woman. This is mainly addressed for you, so-called men. Little boys. Huh? Can't control yourself and want to blame others. That's what we're gonna, that's the meat of what we're talking about. I want to share this really quickly with you, but go to turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 2. That's where we're gonna read. But I'm gonna I'm gonna share this quick little tale with you before. I know we've I've been yabbering before we get into the scriptures. Bear with me. A while ago, oh, about maybe five years ago, I was counseling, so-called. Counseling so-called because nothing I said through the scriptures to these people took any effect. It didn't work for them. <laughs> that sounds pragmatic. No, no, they weren't saved. And I was trying, and the Lord led me to this couple, which was a, a couple, a mixed couple. A Japhethian woman with a Hamite man. Okay? And the Hamite man just smacked the, his Japhethian woman around like there was no tomorrow. And always blamed her. And, you know, warned, I warned them. The Lord warned them through the scriptures, through me. Okay? Counsel's like, hey, you know, you, you get that angry? Go on a bike ride. Leave. But he did the constant, but but she did this, but she did what a blah, 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 yeah, 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 God said kind of thing, and, you know, blaming her. It's horrible. It's horrible. But the woman, the Japhethian woman, who legitimately had a little screw loose, devil possessed, both of them were, Oh, oh, right in his face, antagonistic, combative, brawling. That did not give this man the right at all to smack her. Oh, no, not so ever. But you see, when the woman takes on the aggressor role, as a man does when the trying when a man is ought to do when defending truth, not his pride. There's no excuse for smacking a woman. But at the same time, when you got a woman with a lost man, okay, fed by Satan, the Jesuits in this world, trained through predictive programming through the media to see women as pieces of meat. Can you blame the outcome? But then again, you got to remember, the devil isn't putting gun to these people's heads, forcing them to smack women or to abuse women. No, but they are programmed. It's still their fault. It's still their fault. Because every one of us is going to give an account of ourselves to God. At the, uh, uh, for us who are saved of the church of the living God, at the judgment seat of Christ. For the lost, you're going to go to the great white throne of judgment. Okay? And I have also seen quite abusive things in my life. Men towards women. Even women um, towards men. Yeah. I've seen, I, I saw once a fine looking woman, so called. In a red dress. I was at the opera house. I was lost at the time in a bar. 
and a fine look woman with her boyfriend or whatever in a nice suit. They were at the opera house here in Woodstock and they got into an argument and this fine looking blonde haired woman wham! Head butted her boyfriend or whatever. Blood went over. Yeah, there you go. There you go. Yeah, but see there's no excuse for violence within a relationship. None. There's no excuse for a man to strike a woman. Again, if a woman's going to come at you with a butcher knife or a baseball bat, uh, defend yourself. Okay? Okay? Guns are a little different. You know, in reality, if, uh, like, if I were here and my good friend from Blackpool were five foot in front of me with a pistol, uh, odds would be on my side because the, the distance between us would be only five or six feet with a handgun. Your chances of surviving someone with a handgun at that close range is better for you. But give your attacker a knife in that short a distance, not looking good. Your best bet is to play defensive. You know, get a chair, knock it out of their hand. Or if you know some uh, martial arts moves, like I do, you know, disarm them, get them down, and then book. Okay? Okay? Those are different circumstances. Those are different circumstances. And you women out there, if you are if if you are stupid enough to attack a man with a weapon. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, you know. And men? Men? I and this I I've seen I didn't see the actual effect. I saw the door slam, and then it's like, oh, wow. And heard, okay? All right? You know, a man gets a belt to go after a woman, right? Right? Or picks up a, a wooden spoon to go and hit a woman, and the woman decides to take a book, you know, pulls down a bookcase and slams him on his head, or takes a, a big glass glass ashtray and whips it at him and bonks him in the head okay self-defense okay self-defense okay unlike what these pacifist wimps preach okay self-defense is allowed in scripture you as a woman you're not a pincushion you're not a, a punching bag neither is a man Neither is a man. There again, you know, I have I've been slapped by a woman. And it's like, oh, uh, uh, just walk away. You know, absolutely, absolutely. It's when your life is in danger. Then again, some people will argue. It's like, well, you know, there are some women out there. You know, look at these UFC fighter women. Okay, everything is messed up. Everything is messed up with feminism. Okay. That's the Jesuits for you. But now, enough of my yapping. I'm 18 minutes in. Okay? Turn in your authorized version of the scriptures to Genesis chapter 2. We have to address this first. Okay? The role of woman. Now, like I said, there will be videos in the description box where we get really in-depth in this. But we have to address this today in this context for what we are speaking about. Genesis chapter 2. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 on to verse 23. And the Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him and help meet for him. And help meet for him. Okay? Bibles pervert this and make them, and make it kind of, Perverse, <laughs> to just put it plainly. Bibles mess this up, okay? Bibles mess this up. A help meet for him, okay? Bibles imply that the woman was made because to be served by man. When the scriptures teach that the woman was made to be a help meet for the man, okay? Let's continue. And out of the ground the Lord God formed every beast of the field 
and every fowl of the air, and brought them unto Adam to see what he would call them. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. And Adam gave names to all cattle, and to the fowl of the air, and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found an help meet for him. And the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon Adam. And he slept, and he took one of his ribs, and closed up the flesh instead thereof. And the rib which the Lord God had taken from man made he a woman and brought her unto the man. And Adam said, This is now bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh. She shall be called woman. What does woman mean? Because, that sh because she was taken out of man. Okay, that is what woman means. Taken out of man or out of man or of man. Okay, that's wo man. W-O man. Okay, of man. Taken out of man. All right. Woman was created, made to be a help meet onto the man. Okay. The man wasn't there to be a help meet onto the woman. Okay? That's what God says. That's the way it is. But what happened? But what happened? If you read in Genesis chapter 3, okay, the temptation, Satan went to Eve. Where was Adam during all that? We do not know. But Satan went to Eve. And Satan tempted Eve with the fruit of the garden. God said, don't eat of the tree. Satan said, Die! Yea, hath God said, Go ahead and eat of it. Because, you know, God knows, in the day you eat thereof, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Meaning that you will be able to judge for yourself what is good and evil. When man in their heart, at their best, doesn't know truly what good and evil is, God does. Okay? And with that temptation, okay, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, she took of the fruit thereof, and did eat, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. Right here, in Genesis chapter 3, verse 6, we see the very beginning flavors of what is today known as feminism. How so? Satan tempted Eve. Not, not at gunpoint, okay? Not at gunpoint. Where was Adam during the temptation? We do not know. We do not know. All we know is that Eve was left by herself without her covering. Okay? Eve was tempted of Satan. In that temptation, she added to the scripture saying, uh, neither will you touch it lest you die. And you look in Genesis chapter 2, God never said, neither shall you touch it. Okay? He said, don't eat it. He didn't say you couldn't touch it. He said, don't eat it. Okay? Eve added to the scripture. Eve, in this temptation should have bolted, run, run, run for her husband. Where he was, we don't know, okay? She should have ran for, uh, to her husband, okay? Adam has the head. Eve was to help meet. Where was Adam during all that? We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. Now, like I said, in verse 6, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, oh yeah, saw that it was good for food, it looked beautiful, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, see, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, uh, of verse 5, And God, for God doth know that in the day ye eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as gods, lowercase g, knowing good and evil. Only God truly knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. 
The Jesuits in America that run this nation of America, they call evil good and good evil. Okay? That's what they do. All right? Man at his best and his enlightened self doesn't truly know what is truly good and what is truly evil. The law of God is written in our hearts. Yes, in everyone's hearts. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. It's called that. Th it's that thing called conscience, which a lot of people sear. You can't kill your conscience. You can sear it, but you can't kill it. Okay. But see, the lie was, "You shall be, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil." What God calls evil. The Jesuits' fallen man calls good. What fallen man, the Jesuits, call good, God calls evil. See. But now, in Genesis chapter 2, now because of this, we see the birth of feminism. The woman taking the leading role and giving on to her husband, Adam. There are those out there who say that... Um, that Adam chose to die for her husband. Mm. Mm. And they go to, well, the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Saying, well, Adam wasn't the one to deceive. This is true. But as we've just seen, um, where was Adam? He was nowhere there. He was nowhere there in that temptation from verses 1 on to verse 5. What that is talking about when Paul says it was Eve who was deceived and not Adam, uh, Satan went to Eve. Adam was nowhere present. Okay. Personally, I don't buy... It's a legitimate uh, argument and it's nothing we're not we're going to debate about. I do not buy the fact that Adam... Um, was aware. I don't feel by the fact that Adam chose to die with his wife. Okay. Yes, Adam was not deceived because Satan didn't go to Adam. Uh, didn't go to Adam. Satan went to Eve. Okay. That text. Okay. Uh, which is uh, which we're going to look at. Okay. Which we are going to look at. Satan went to Eve. Adam was nowhere there. So when Paul mentions that, he's mentioning about how Eve was deceived because Satan went to Eve, not to Adam. Okay? But looking now at verse 17 on to verse 21 in Genesis chapter 2, the result thereof. And of course they eat, their eyes are open, sin is brought in, all things go to pieces. But Genesis chapter 2, verses 17. And on to Adam... And we're reading on to verse 21. And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Man, even in the beginning, the relationship was pristine because there was no sin. But you got to remember, Eve was made as an help me for Adam. Adam wasn't made to eventually be the slave to Eve. Okay? No, that's twisting the order. And unto Adam he said, because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife. Okay? Adam should have been like, smacked it out of her hand. Adam should have been there. He should have. Where he was, we do not know. Okay? Adam should have been there. Okay? And once Adam was aware of what Eve had done, he would have, should have been like, whoa, hey, what's wrong with you? And they should have gone to the Lord right away. But No. No, and see, there, therein lies the argument. Well, he chose to die with his wife because bone of her, his bones, flesh of his flesh. Valid argument, yes. I don't buy that one. I, I don't buy that one. Uh, Eve was deceived. Adam wasn't, meaning Satan didn't go to Adam. But we do not know whether or not uh, Eve uh, did like, hey, hey, kind of tricked him. We do not know. We do not know. But regardless... Verse 17, And unto Adam he said, Because thou hast hearkened unto the voice of thy wife, and hast eaten of the tree of which I commanded thee, saying, Thou shalt not eat of it. Cursed is the ground for thy sake. In sorrow shalt thou eat of it all the days of thy life. Thorns also and thistles shall it bring forth to thee, and thou shalt eat the herb of the field. In the sweat of thy face shalt thou eat bread, till thou return unto the ground, for out of it Wast thou taken for dust thou art, and unto dust thou shalt return. The result. But look at verse 16. The curse. 
Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. Apparently, before the fall, giving birth was a lot less painful for you women. And thy desire shall be to thy husband, and he shall rule over thee. Now this implies, this implies the ruling over, that it was not so in the way it is fashioned in the curse as it was before, okay? Eve was made as an help me for the man, okay? The implication, what is being said is, before the fall, before sin was there, the relationship between man and wife was very different. Yes, the woman was made to be a help meet for the man, but after the fall, and he shall rule over thee. Okay? Rule over thee. Okay? That it was the result of the fall, of Eve taking the leading role as in verse 6. Okay? And we also see another example of this in Genesis chapter 16. In Genesis chapter 16. Genesis chapter 16, verses 1 under verse 6. Now Sarai, Abram's wife, bare to him no children, and she had in handmaid an Egyptian, whose name was Hagar. And Sarai said unto Abram, Behold now, the Lord hath restrained me from bearing. I pray thee, go, into, go in unto my maid. It may be that I may obtain children by her. And Abram hearkened to the voice of Sarai. And Sarai, Abram's wife, took Hagar, her maid, the Egyptian, after Abram had dwelt ten years in the land of Canaan, and gave her to her husband, Abram, to be his wife. And he went in unto Hagar, and she conceived. And when she saw that she had conceived, her mistress was despised in her eyes. And Sarai, now see, let's stop right there. What has happened here? Sarai took the leading role. And went to Abraham and went to Abram said, hey, I'm barren. Here, take Hagar. Go into her so I can have children. She took the lead there, which she was not supposed to do. Why did this happen? Okay, you look in Genesis chapter 15 verses 4 on the verse 6. Okay, uh, Genesis chapter 15 verses 4 on the verse 6. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him, Abram saying, This shall not be thine heir. Talking about his the Eliezer of Damascus, the steward, okay? But he that shall come forth out of thine own bowels shall be thine heir, okay? And he brought him forth abroad and said, Look now toward heaven and tell the stars, if thou be able to number them. And he said unto him, So shall thy seed be. And Abraham believed the Lord and he counted it to him for righteousness. So you see in Genesis chapter 15 verse 4 the promise of an heir from the bowels of Abram himself. Okay? And you got to remember what our Lord Jesus Christ said about marriage, okay? At the beginning it was not so. Not so what? Having multiple wives, okay? At the beginning he created them male and female. One man, one wife was the intention from the beginning. Okay? What resulted after the fall? Polygamy. Multiple wives. King Solomon. That's all we got to say. King David. Okay? God wasn't for that. He used that absolutely. Yes, he did. But from the, from the beginning, the intention was one man, one woman. Okay? One man and one woman. Okay? From the, at the very beginning, God's intention was to live amongst his people and to have a pristine, unadulterated relationship. But see, when disobedience, sin was brought in, hence here we are today. Okay? But from the beginning, one man, one woman. Okay? Okay? And see, Sarai, also aware, privy to the promise, they took it upon themselves to bring about that promised heir of themselves. Okay? Now let's continue in Genesis chapter 16. Picking up at verse 5. 
And Sarai said unto Abram, My wrong be upon thee. I have given my maid into thy bosom. And when she saw that she had conceived, I was despised in her eyes. The Lord judge between me and thee. Verse 6. But Abram said unto Sarai, Behold, thy maid is in thy hand. Do to her as it pleaseth thee. And when Sarai dealt hardly with her, she fled from her face. And what resulted of that? Ishmael. And Ishmael's descendants are who? The Muslims. Okay? And Ishmael, Isaac. Look at Israel, the Palestinian, the Palestinians, and the Hebraic um, thing going on. Okay? That was the result of Sarai taking the lead and offering Hagar onto Abram. Abram shouldn't have done that. Sarai shouldn't have done that. Sarai went to Abram, but Abram being the head, it's like, no, you're my wife. You're my wife. I No, no. Well, what about, well, I don't know. I don't know. In Genesis chapter 15, verse 6, and he believed the Lord, and he counted it to, to him for righteousness. But yet they took it in their own power to do so. And the result, you're seeing in, over in Israel today. Okay? And also in um, Genesis chapter 17, okay, verses 15 on to verse 19. Now, this was the change. In Genesis chapter 17, now he is called Abraham, okay, a father of many nations. And God said unto Abraham, As for Sarai thy wife, thou shalt not call her name Sarai, but Sarah shall her name be. And I will bless her, and give thee a son of a son also of her. Yea, I will bless her, and she shall be a mother of nations. Kings of people shall be of her. Then Abraham fell upon his face and laughed and said in his heart, Shall a child be born unto him that is an hundred years old? And shall Sarah that is ninety years old bear? And Abraham said unto God, Oh, that Ishmael might live before thee. And God said, Sarah thy wife shall bear thee a son indeed, the promised seed. In Isaac thy seed shall be called, okay? And thou shalt call his name Isaac. And I will establish my covenant with him for an everlasting covenant and with his seed after him. And let's read verse 20. And as for Ishmael, I have heard thee. Behold, I have blessed him. I will make him fruitful and will multiply him exceedingly. Twelve princes shall he beget. And I will make him a great nation. And the Lord did. Okay? The Lord did. The Muslims are descended of Ishmael. Okay? Of Ishmael. Okay? But it is in Isaac that the seed is called. Okay? But see, again, in Genesis chapter 16, Sarai, before this, before 17, where they became Abraham and Sarah, Sarai took it in her own power and went to her husband, who should have been like, no, hun, no, I don't want to do that. No, 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 no. God promised that's going to, they took it upon themselves. And look what happened because of it. See? See? Okay? And you got to remember too, this thing of the woman taking the authority, of uh, usurping authority, okay? We do have to remember in Proverbs chapter 21, Proverbs chapter 21, okay? Just two verses we're going to look at. And this is a result of the fall, okay? This is all a result of the fall that we looked at in Genesis chapter 3, okay? This is all a result of it, all right? But uh, Proverbs chapter 21, verse 9. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Oh. Now, look at this verse very carefully. Okay? Look at the verse very carefully. 
It is better to dwell in the corner of an of the housetop. Corner of the housetop. What does that mean? That means getting away from what? Okay? Than with a brawling woman in a wide house. It doesn't say... It doesn't even imply that when you have a brawling woman that you take this physical role and smack her into submission. It doesn't even imply that. What it implies is when you're living with a brawling woman, you know, a woman that wants to get in your face and nah, 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 and stuff like that, what is it, what is it saying? It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop. Get away from them. Get away from them. Walk away. Okay, let let them blow off their steam. Let them do what they're going to Let them throw pots and pans. Let them slam doors. You get away. Okay? Look at, and also looking at verse 19. Okay? Again, verse 19 in Proverbs 21. It is better to dwell in the wilderness. Dwell in the wilderness than with a contentious, contending, headbutting, and an angry woman. Okay? So what? Look at this verse. It is better to dwell in the in the wilderness. Look at verse 9. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop. When you are with or around a woman that is brawling, contentious, or angry, and you can't reason with them. Okay? Or whatever. It does not even imply you fighting fire with fire. It doesn't imply you taking off your belt to go whoop a woman as if she is an animal. It doesn't imply at all that you, well, I just couldn't control myself. Look, she was brawling with me, contentious and angry. It's her fault that I swear. No. Get away. Get away. Walk away, boy. Walk on home, boy. Get away. Get away from them. No excuse. Again, again okay, if a woman's going to attack you with a knife, that's a different story. Women, if a man's going to attack you with a knife, that's a different... Defend yourself. Yes. Yes. But see... When dealing with an angry, with a brawling, or angry and contentious woman, get away from them. You women! Women! Hello! Okay? You, you got a man who's being a jerk, angry, contentious, trying to start stuff? Walk away! Walk away! Don't stand your ground and get in his face and nah, nah, nah. No, don't do that. Okay? Get away from him! Okay, and, and now go to Proverbs chapter 25. Go to Proverbs chapter 25. Okay, the thing here in Proverbs 21, um, I believe it is, uh, well, we'll find out. Proverbs chapter 25, verses 23 under verse 28. Okay, yeah, it's, it, okay. Proverbs 25, verses 23 unto 28. The north wind driveth away rain. Driveth away rain. Rain, symbolizing nourishment. Okay? So doth an angry countenance and a backbiting tongue. Okay? So look at that verse. Okay? Look at the verse. Don't look at me. The north wind, north wind, driveth away rain. Again, rain signifying nourishment, sustenance. So doth an angry countenance a backbiting tongue. So an angry countenance and a backbiting tongue driveth away rain, nourishment, sustenance. Verse 24. It is better to dwell in the corner of the housetop, this is repeated again, than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Proverbs 21. Verse 9, it says it word for word. It is better to dwell in a corner of the housetop than with a brawling woman in a wide house. Okay? 
Again, anger, confidence, a backbiting tongue, get, get away. Walk away. You're not a real man if you decide to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with a woman and then blame her for you being a little child, a little snot-nosed punk, and smacking her. When God says, get away, get away. Okay, let's continue. As cold waters to a thirsty soul, so is good news from a far country. A righteous man falling down before the wicked is as a troubled fountain and a corrupt spring. It is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. Now, before we read verse 28, look at that verse. It is not good to eat much honey. So for men to search their own glory is not glory. Hmm. Uh, what is this talking about? I'll go back to Proverbs 20. Just one verse. Proverbs 20. Verse 6. Hmm. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness. But a faithful man who can find. Hmm? And then, um, and also here in Proverbs 25, verse 14. Okay, read. let's read verse 27 again. It is not good to eat much honey, for so, so for men to search their own glory is not glory. Proverbs 20, verse 6. Most men will proclaim everyone his own goodness, but a faithful man who can find. And God has called us, we who are saved of the church of the living God, to be faithful. And in verse 14 in Proverbs 25, Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. Missing that in verse 25. The north wind driveth away rain. Rain again signifying nourishment. Looking at verse 14. Whoso boasteth himself of a false gift is like clouds and wind without rain. Missing nourishment. Missing the nourishment. Oh, he's a guy who has a big house, right? Lots, uh, lots of cars, lots of money, fine clothes. But yet, verse 28, He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Uninhabitable, broken down and without walls, no defense. I know a lot of people who are so easy to get angry. <laughs> very, very, very easy to get angry, which is their weakness. You angry, bro? Uh, cheerio, huh? <laughs> Mate? <laughs> hey? Yeah. Yeah. He that hath no rule over his own spirit is like a city that is broken down and without walls. Broken down. Uninhabitable. And without walls, no defense. Why? Because they fly off at the handle. While all the while boasting themselves that they're something when they ain't nothing. Yeah. Yeah. I've heard it and a lot of people have also heard it's like, why do all the fine women want the bad boys? Well, uh, they're not fine women. Okay? Okay, they're not. They're not godly women, okay? A godly woman wants nothing to do with the bad boy, okay? Again, check out the videos of Woman of God, okay? And cold, very cold, okay? They're, they're, they will be in the description box, okay? It's, it's the lost seeking their own, okay? Okay? <laughs> it's nonsense. It's nonsense. Now... Go to Matthew chapter 7. Okay, Matthew chapter 7. This is for our instruction in righteousness, obviously. Matthew chapter 7. Men. You did, and I've always, with a guy who, with a so-called man, 
who has no rule over his own spirit, who flies off at the handle and is going to smack a woman because she didn't cook his potatoes right. Okay? Those types of men are the biggest cowards you will ever meet. They really are. They really are. They boast themselves that they're these big, big macho men, but yet they're going to go smack a woman and give her a black eye because didn't make his potatoes right. Or even worse, because you have a brawling, angry, contentious woman with an angry countenance and a backbiting tongue right in your face. Nah, 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 nah. Go walk away. Walk away. Walk away from that. Okay? But no, I'm, I'm a tough guy. I'm, I'm not going to look. You're going to be in my face. Blah, 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 blah. No, no. God says, walk away. Walk away. Satan says, you're not going to let a woman do that to you. Matthew chapter 7, verses 7 on to verse 12. Ask and it shall be given you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. Really quickly, you think about these women who want to take the role of men. Women putting on suits, taking on the behaviors of men. Look at Joyce Meyer. Okay? <laughs> Look at Joyce Meyer. Look at how the Jesuits through the media have portrayed you women as objects. Huh? Yet, ask and you uh, ask was ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and ye shall find. Knock and it shall be opened unto you. That works both ways. You seek the Lord with a broken, contrite, and fearful, you know, uh, broken of your self righteousness, contrite, having godly sorrow, and fearing Him. You seek the Lord, you're going to find Him when you come to Him on His terms. But then again, the opposite is true. You want to seek Satan and what he offers you. Because, hey, this whole world has been given unto Satan, and whoever he will, he gives it to. If you fall down and worship him, it works both ways. And Satan, what he teaches you, yes, you don't abuse a woman, but yet rubs feminism into the face of everybody. And I'll tell you what. If you've ever dealt with a feminist before, a legitimate fe oh, wow. Wow. And you know what? There are some women out there, I mean, these UFC fighters, a UFC female fighter who could probably whoop the snot out of me in a heartbeat. But that's America. That's America. <laughs> Little G, God bless America, and he has. Little G, God, Lucifer, Satan. But verse 7, for, this is our instruction, this is the Sermon on the Mount, talking about the kingdom of heaven. Okay, doctrinally, this doesn't apply for us. Um, for our instruction in righteousness, that's what we are looking at. Okay, verse 8. For everyone that asketh receiveth, and he that seeketh findeth. And to him that knocketh, it shall be opened. Like I said, that works for both ways. Be aware of that. Be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Okay? Who's answering the prayers? Beg your pardon. I'm writing that down. <laughs> Beg your pardon. I have this habit of forgetting to put things in the description box. Anyway, let's continue. Or what man is there of you whom if his son asks bread, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he give him a serpent? If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your Father, which is in heaven, give good things to them that ask him? Got to remember context? 
doctrinally, this is in uh, applies for the kingdom of heaven when Jesus Christ will be sitting on the throne at Jerusalem. Okay, when Christ will physically be present as king. This is our instruction in righteousness. Verse 12. Verse 12. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Okay? This is the golden rule. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. I have heard it said that from a system that if the man is doing as God hath said, then I absolutely, the woman of God, will, be, will rejoice to do what God hath said. When the one is doing what God says, it's easy for the other to also do what God says. Okay? But when one is not doing either of the equation of what God has said, hence... Hence, trouble, trouble. You know, that's, that's the beauty of Proverbs 31. The first nine verses deal with us men, okay? How we are to be men of God, men who follow the Lord, whithersoever he will go, will have us to go. He must increase, but we must decrease, okay? Then it follows the rest with the godly woman, the woman of God. Okay, like I said, check out the videos in the description box. When we as men do as God has said in relation to women, to our wives, to women in general, things would go a lot smoother. Okay, now, now go to Romans chapter 12. Okay, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. <laughs> uh, <laughs> men? How would you like it if uh, someone smacked you upside the head because you made an innocent mistake or because you spoke up? Hmm? Wouldn't like that much at all. Hey, you women, how, how do you like when you got a man right in front of you screaming and barking at you, huh? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Okay? Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12, verses 18 on to verse 21. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Well, that's just men, Brad. Uh, remember, what does woman mean? Taken out of man, of man, okay? Mankind, okay? If it be possible, as much as lieth in you. You got a woman who's being contentious right in your face? Huh? Walk away. She follows you. <laughs> Lock the door. She persists. Go on a walk. Ride a bike. Drive to um, Canada. Do whatever you got to do. Diffuse the situation. Walk away. Okay? Walk away. You're not a man if you're going to fold your arms and put the foot down and be like, I ain't going to let a woman. Uh, what? Well, I'm not a real man. Let a woman talk to me like that? Smack her? Put it? No, you're not a man. You're a boy. You're a coward. You're a wimp. You're a sissy. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And you women. You women, you ought not to be in a man's face like that. You ought not to be, well, if he wasn't like this, or you men, if she wasn't like that. No, you got to take a responsibility of your own actions. You can't blame other people. 
If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, live peaceably with all men. Gotta get even, right? Not gonna let a woman talk to you like that, right? Dearly beloved. Now this is for saved people. This is in context, Romans 12, talking for us who are saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God. You people who are lost, you ought to really take hold of this. Let us reason together, you and I. Link in the description box, okay? If you're lost, you're one of these so-called men who blame a woman for you smacking her. When you pick on someone your own size, tough guy. Huh? Oh, but no. Virtually every single man that I have ever encountered who has claimed to have smacked a woman or beaten up on a woman, every single one of them, that wimps, that cowards. Every single one. Okay? Now, I have met a man, a man, who legitimate, who smacked a woman, but because of that led onto his salvation. And it's obvious, you know, for a woman, uh, you know, not to trust her because she's lost too. See, a lost woman is not ready to forget what a man was when they were lost. In that right, brother. In that right, brother. You know that God has forgiven you, but that woman of yours who is lost doesn't want to believe that the person that she once knew as a lost man isn't still the same person that she's looking at today. Yeah. But you who are lost, you, you need to take, a, take heed to this. You need to take heed to this. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. And let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. And if I would, I would call my wife in here, she would attest to the same thing. Okay? When I personally fail at doing what the scriptures saith unto me as a man to do unto my, unto my wife, oh boy, the chastening is glorious. Oh boy. They're chastening. Oh, boy. I could bring in my wife right now. And she will tell you. When she doesn't do what the scriptures tell her to do as a wife. Oh, boy. The chastening is glorious. I, hey, when I don't do, and I, I fail constantly. I do. I do. So Romans 7. Okay? When I don't do as I am supposed to do as the husband unto my wife. Oh, wow. The Lord chastens me sore. Oh, boy, you talk about a recompense. When my wife doesn't do for me as she is supposed to do as a, as a wife unto me, her husband, she would attest to this. Oh, boy, the Lord chastens her sore. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath, for it is written, Vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. Now again, this is in context to those of the church of the living God. Okay, You got to remember, dear people, you got to remember, there is such a thing as consequences. Okay, God can save you. Absolutely. You got to come to him on his terms, broken, contrite, and in fear of him, you call upon his name, and may he save you. Okay, he, he'll save you. If you come to him on his terms and your heart is truly contrite and broken, okay? But he'll save you from hell. You're not going to go to hell. But that doesn't mean he's ne not necessarily going to save you or rescue you from the consequences of your past actions. For example, I have a heart problem because I have poisoned and done very bad things to the temple that the Lord Jesus Christ lives within. Okay, I've, I've treated my body quite poorly. Consequence, a recompense. I'm going to heaven when I die. But what I've done to my body, I'm reaping what I've sown. As a lost man, I was a sodomite. 
I have memories that won't go away. Reaping what I have sown, a recompense. I'm going to heaven when I die. But a consequence. Okay? Consequence. And the point is, you know, when you have a woman who's in your face, bah, 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 or you have a man who's, you know, um, trying to wrestle authority, you know, be this big tough guy, you know. Vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. For example, when I'm um, out of line with my wife, my wife doesn't say anything. She's basically, but what she is saying is, um, Lord's going to deal with you. That you know, the Lord's going to deal with you, and He does. When my wife gets out of line with me, back off. The Lord's going to deal with you, and He does. For every action, there is a reaction. For everything, there is a consequence. They're going to get what's coming to them. It's not up to us to get vengeance. Okay? And let's continue. Verse 20 and 21 in Romans 12. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. Kill him with kindness. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. As I have said countless times, when you fight fire with fire, what's going to win? Fire. Well, it doesn't matter if you were the one holding it or the other. Fire is going to win if you fight fire with fire. Okay? And, and also, too, uh, looking at James chapter 1, Okay, uh, verse 19 again. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay, saith the Lord. James chapter 1. James chapter 1. You got to remember about James. It is written for the Jews during the time of Jacob's trouble. Okay, it is the time of Jacob's trouble epistle. But... Right here, James chapter 1, verses 19 on to verse 20. Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak, slow to wrath. Verse 20. For the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. The wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Okay? And also on that, go to Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. Proverbs chapter 14. The wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God. Okay? Proverbs 14 verses 1 on verse 3. Every wise woman, wise, fearing the Lord, buildeth her house. But the foolish, the fool has said in his heart, there is no God. To be foolish is to behave as if you are one who says in your heart, there is no God. But the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. An angry and contentious wife, a brawling wife, but ah, men, hold on. He that walketh in his uprightness fear at the Lord walk away it's like hey <laughs> you're gonna be like that I, I, I'm gonna go over here Lord's gonna deal with you I love you Lord's gonna deal with you I'm just gonna leave you alone let you cool off you gotta be careful Lord's gonna deal with you that works both ways okay he that walketh in his uprightness fear at the Lord but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. Perverse in his ways. I'm going to go smack a woman. Because she's up in your face. Why is she in your face? She's in your face. Get away. Do whatever you got to do. That's not you as a man being a coward. That's you as a man doing what you're supposed to do. 
You understand? It's you are being perverse. When you have a woman, blah, 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 and you women, you <laughs> okay? But when you got a woman, blah, 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 in your face doing the head bobble thing, okay? Being contentious to you, walk away. Walk away. Verse 3. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. I'm not going to have a man tell me what to do. No woman going to do. No woman going to tell me what to do. I'm the head of the house. In the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride. But the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Wise, acquainted with wisdom, fear of the Lord, and to depart from evil is understanding. A lot of these Christians, I'm not a Christian, by the way. I'm of the Church of God, which is the Church of the Living God. Long story, okay? A lot of Christians will take this, that they are the head covering for the wife, and abuse it. Um, His Holiness, uh, Mr. Denlinger, um, actually did a four-part four part video on that Jack Hiles guy who you look and, and, like I said, you watch those videos about Jack Hiles who said he was for women and all this kind of stuff, but you find out what how they actually treated women as objects. It seems with a lot of the independent fundamental Baptists that this I am king and I will do whatever I'm going to do unto my wife because I'm king and she has no... Uh, yes, we are the head of the wife. Yes, we are. Yes, we are. But you got to remember about ruling with them. They are the weaker vessel, which we are going to look at, okay? Yeah, a lot of Christians, and it does seem from the independent fundamental Baptist uh, crowd, not relegated just to them. It's also with the Charismatics. Also a lot with the Catholics. But then again, Catholic women are synonymous with Jezebels anyway. So, <laughs> but nonetheless, you see this thing about the man being the head of the wife, being taken advantage of, being abused by Christians. That's wicked. That's wicked. That's wicked. You're not being a godly man. You're not being a godly man. Let's continue. Okay, while here in Proverbs, uh, let's look at verse 17. Okay? All right? Let's read verses 1 and 3 again in Proverbs 14. Every wise woman buildeth her house, but the foolish plucketh it down with her hands. He that walketh in his uprightness feareth the Lord, but he that is perverse in his ways despiseth him. And the mouth of the foolish is a rod of pride, but the lips of the wise shall preserve them. Verse 17, he that is soon angry dealeth foolishly, and a man of wicked devices is hated. Wicked devices is hated. Yeah. You're angry because your wife didn't cook your potatoes right. You're angry because she's not walking a certain way. So you take it upon her. And what is this? And, the, and a man of wicked devices is hated? The device of violence. Not only the violence physically, but emotional, verbal violence. You know, I've heard it said by battered, abused women that at least with a fist, they can heal from it. It's those words that cut. Words. Oh, what James says about the tongue. It's an evil, full of deadly poison. Right? Yeah. 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 And, and now go to Proverbs 22. Proverbs 22. Verses 24 and 25. Make no friendship with an angry man. And with a furious man thou shalt not go. Lest thou learn, lest thou learn his ways and get a snare to thy soul. Mm. Uh, Psalm 103, or 101, verse 3, just one verse. Psalm 101, 
I will set no wicked thing before mine eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside. It shall not cleave to me. Hmm. Yeah. Make no friendship with an angry man, and with a furious man thou shalt not go. Again, anger resteth in the bosom of fools. Where is that? That's Ecclesiastes chapter 7. Ecclesiastes chapter 7. One verse, verse 9. Be not hasty in thy spirit to be angry. Why? For anger resteth. Resteth in the bosom of fools. Why do you think we what we've already looked at when the Lord says, you know, it's better to dwell in the corner of a housetop than with a brawling woman. It's better to dwell in the wilderness than with an angry and contentious woman. You know, yielding pacifieth offenses. Okay, and in the face of anger, walk away. Walk away. Walk away. Okay, and, and go back to Proverbs 14, verses, uh, Proverbs 14, verses, what is that, 5 on to verse 7, a faithful witness will not lie, but a faithful witness will utter lies, and we have been called to be faithful. A scorner seeketh wisdom and findeth not, but knowledge is easy unto him that understandeth. A scorner seeketh wisdom. What is wisdom? The fear of the Lord. And findeth it not. Why? Because he's a scorner. Soon angry. Scorned. Hell hath no fury as a woman scorned. Yeah. But knowledge, knowing something, is easy unto him that understandeth, Departing from evil. Oh, wow, what a concept. Go from the presence of a foolish man, women, when thou perceivest not in him the lips of knowledge. You who are lost, who are fornicating, you know, not married, and have a boyfriend and he's abusive with his tongue and also with his fist and you stay with him, you're stupid. You're stupid. Get away from him. You married someone, okay, who is abusive to you, okay? See, that's another thing that Catholics like to say. Well, there's no fornication or adultery, okay? So you think the Lord Jesus Christ is okay with a married woman staying in a marriage with someone who treats her as an animal, whoops her, beats her? I beg to differ. I beg to differ. No truly saved, born-again man of the church of the living God would ever physically abuse or verbally abuse his wife. We get mad, yes, we get angry, excuse me, mad is insanity. We get angry sometimes, yes, and we say things that we don't, that we shouldn't. Yes, 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 that happens. But we, we, we repent of it, okay? But anyone who is truly saved is never going to physically abuse their wife. It's not going to happen. It's not going to happen. And if it does happen, you need to examine yourself. Because the spirit of Christ that is in you, it would not be for you, even when you got a woman who is in your face or whatever. Um, the spirit of God that is in you is not going to be okay with you hauling off and smacking her. It's his job to get even, not yours. Remember? Remember? Okay? Now, go to Galatians. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. Galatians chapter 5. We want verses 16 on to verse 21. This I say then, walk in the capital S spirit, 
and ye shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. For the flesh lusteth against the spirit, and the spirit against the flesh, and these are contrary the one to the other, so that ye cannot do the things that ye would. But if ye be led of the Spirit, capital S, the Lord himself, the Lord is that Spirit, ye are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these. Adultery, it starts with adultery. Being with someone other than your husband or your wife. Fornication. Relations outside of the marriage bond. Both physical and spiritual. Remember that. This is, applies physical, yes, but also spiritual. Remember that. Uncleanness. Lasciviousness. Idolatry. I Remember, idolatry is not relegated to like a little marionette statue or anything like that. It's also the idolatry of looking at yourself in the mirror, ye shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Yeah. Witchcraft. Hatred. Variance. Emulations. Wrath. Strife. Seditions. Heresies. Envying. Murders, drunkenness, revelings, and such like. Those are the works of the flesh. Of the which I tell you before, as I have also told you in time past, that they which do such things shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Kingdom of God. What is that talking about? Spiritual. Spiritual. You know, here, but the, the spirit that will in you, that is in you, which is the Lord Jesus Christ, will give you the knowledge. Okay? You have wisdom, which is the fear of the Lord, which results in understanding, departing from evil. And the Lord that dwells within you, and the Lord is that spirit, will give you knowledge of him through the scriptures. Okay? So you look at these works of the flesh. When you as a man, are going to be demeaning, demeaning to your wife, ruling her with a fist of iron. Those are works of the flesh. And these works of the flesh were well hidden in the IF, in, uh, new IFB stuff with those Baptist type guys who you want to use religion, the scriptures, as a means to rule their wives with a fist of iron. Contrast to this, verses 22 on to verse 26. But the fruit of the Spirit, capital S, that means the Lord himself, the Lord is that Spirit, uh, 2 Corinthians 3, verse 17. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith. Love, this love is not the sappy saccharine, sweet, splendor, sweet um, love where I'm not going to tell you the truth. Okay? True love is a love that tells you the truth. True love is a love that tells you the truth in due time. With meekness, with temperance, with patience. Long suffering. Verse 23. Meekness, temperance, against such there is no law. And they that are Christ's have crucified the flesh with the affections and lusts. If we live in the capital S spirit, let us also walk in the capital S spirit. Let us not be desirous of vainglory, provoking one another, envying one another. Ah, provoking one another. A work of the flesh. When a woman is in your face provoking you, when you are nagging your woman or criticizing her or verbally abusing her, 
You're provoking. We're not to provoke one another or envying one another. We are to provoke unto good works. We are to provoke one another unto good works. Yes, not to stay saved or be saved, no. But no, I want to provoke my wife unto good works as according to the scriptures, as she wants to provoke me unto good works according to the scriptures. Okay? Okay? See, therein, if the man of God is doing as he is supposed to according to the scriptures, then the woman of God should find it no difficulty at all adhering to the scriptures to do for her husband as the Lord will, says for them to do within the scriptures. But see, there again it goes back to you knowing good and evil. You don't truly know what is good or what is evil. You don't. Why? Because there's sin in you. You shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Only God, only God knows what is good and what is evil in the authorized version of the scriptures. Only God knows what is good and what is evil. Only God does. Truly knows. Because man, hey, the way of uh, every way of man is right in his own eyes. But the Lord pondereth the hearts. What we can think is good, we look in the scriptures, oh, wow, God calls it evil. And that's what the Jesuits, through the media and through everything, through feminism that is being rubbed in your face, that's what they're pushing and preaching today. It's so Jesuit. It's so double speak. You know? Yes, against violence, against women, yet pushing, promoting feminism. Go to Ephesians chapter 4. Ephesians chapter 4. Verses 26 on to verse 32. Ephesians chapter uh, 4. Verses 26 on to verse 32. Be ye angry. And sin not. Hey, it's a sin for you to strike a woman. In, in anger, because she didn't cook your, your flapjacks right. Or she put a can out of place in your cupboard. Women, be angry and sin not. Why? Because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Yes, be angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Verse 27. Neither give place to the devil. What does this mean? It means don't go to bed angry. And, and go back to Proverbs 14. Go back to Proverbs 14. Proverbs 14. I don't know fingers work with me. <laughs> Take your part. Proverbs 14, we want verses 8 under verse 10. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. Prudence is equated with wisdom. Wisdom, the fear of the Lord, okay? The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his own way. How do you understand your own way? You don't know what is truly good and what is truly evil. Only God truly knows what is truly good and what is truly evil. So, the wisdom, the fear of the Lord, of the prudent is to understand His way. His way. His way. And of course, uh, you go right away. Uh, this is off the top of the head. You go to Psalm 119. Psalm 119. Beth. Psalm 119, Beth, verses 9 on to verse 16. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way, but by taking heed thereto according to thy word? With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. Thy word have I hidden mine heart, that I might not sin against thee. Blessed art thou, O Lord. Teach me thy statutes. With my lips have I declared all the judgments of thy mouth. 
I have rejoiced in the way of thy testimonies, as much as in all riches. I will meditate in thy precepts, and have respect unto thy ways. I will delight myself in thy statutes. I will not forget thy word. Back to uh, Proverbs 14, verse 8. The wisdom of the prudent is to understand his way. But the folly of fools is deceit. Fools make a mock at sin. But among the righteous there is favor. Fools who say in their heart there is no God make a mock at sin. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath, neither give place to the devil. Make a mock at sin. When you blame the woman for striking her. When you blame the woman for going out and getting drunk. You make a mock at sin. When you blame the man for, uh, blame him for you going out and having an adulterous affair with another man. The heart knoweth his own bitterness. Amen. And a stranger doth not intermeddle with his joy. Be ye angry, back in Ephesians chapter 4. Be ye angry and sin not. Let not the sun go down upon your wrath. Neither give place to the devil. If you're angry and you sin in anger, not righteous, uh, uh, not righteous indignation. There's a difference, okay? But... Being angry and you're sinning, you're giving place to the devil. You go to bed angry, you're giving place to the devil. Be careful. Let him that ste stole steal no more, but rather let him labor, working with his hands the thing which is good, that he may have to give to him that needeth. Let no corrupt, putrid, rancid, rank, communication, Proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. Let not let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth. Referring to a woman as a female dog, as a gardening tool. But yet, that's okay in today's society. Refer to you know some Hamites refer to their women. As garden tools? And as female dogs? That's okay. That's okay. Not only Hamites do that. Those of Japheth do that. Those of Shem do that. Hmm. Yes. Let no corrupt communication proceed out of your mouth, but that which is good to the use of edifying, that it may minister grace unto the hearers. <laughs> and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. If you're not saved, you're not sealed. It's that simple. Okay? Again, this is written on to save people. But you who are lost, you better take great heed to this. God is not for at all the abuse of women. Not at all. Not at all. And beware when you run into these Christians who want to use the scriptures, most likely a Bible, to justify their ill behavior toward their wives or toward women in general. Beware of that. God's not for it. Verse 31. Let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor, clamor, and evil speaking be put away from you with all malice. And be ye kind one to another, tender-hearted, forgiving one another, even as God for Christ's sake hath forgiven you. Again, this is written on to save people. But you who are lost, you need to take heed. You need to take great heed. Because the Jesuits, through the media, are teaching you, men, that a woman is an object a piece of meat, while all the while bolstering up the woman that she ain't going to take that from a man. 
It's the Hegelian principle. Argument, counter-argument to, to provide their desired outcome. It's the Hegelian principle being put in place. The Jesuits working both sides of the battle. Okay? <laughs> While saying one thing to the esoteric, the those in the in crowd, and one to the exoteric, to the general populace. To the general populace, the exoteric, with an X. Don't abuse women. But the esoteric, for those that, uh, and you know, okay? The in crowd. Man's king of his own castle, and he has every right to do what he wants to a woman. Woman, you're not going to have a man do that to you. Playing both sides. You see how messed up America is? And you know what? With some rare exceptions, there isn't a nation that isn't plagued by this. A lot of the Muslim countries, um, look at how they treat their women. Making them wear the burqa. Okay? Also, female circumcision. <laughs> Female circumcision, chapter and verse, please. Yes, women having their, beg your pardon, beg your pardon, having their clitoris forcibly removed. Yeah, yeah. And, and there's some argument. We looked at this in the uh, the video, cold, very cold. Not going to get into it here. Um there, can, there could be arguments made about Islam saying that it's okay for them to strike women. Okay, it's it's a shaky argument. It is because you gotta remember the Quran. There are many uh, translations of the Quran out there as well. They don't all say the same thing. Okay, and they throw that back at us. Yeah, the Bibles don't say all the same things. Uh, that's why I read the scriptures. That says Holy Bible. Yes, but within the, the, the scriptures, it never refers to itself as a Bible. And that beautiful remark, uh, that yea hath God said remark, oh, the scripture, uh, Bible isn't in the scripture, but scripture's in the Bible. Oh, yea hath God said. That's beautiful, beautiful. Now, one second, one second. All right. You see, Satan, again, through his church, the Jesuit order, the Jesuits run the media, the Jesuits are con in control of everything, okay? They really are, okay? Satan, through the media, has instilled upon many of you, especially you men, this truly toxic mas masculinity, which is not anything found within Scripture. Okay, and those men, men, who are to be true men, we have the church of the living God. Okay, yes, we are the heads of the, of our wives. Yes, but we got to remember they are fellow heirs with us, and we are not to rule over them with a forcible fist of iron like a lot of the uh, Baptists. Not all of them, not all of them, but a lot of them of the Baptists, the new IFB guys. You know, woman is a slave. Woman is to be treated as an animal, as an object, as a, as a machine to pump out a unit. Let us remember this. Colossians chapter 3, verses 12 on to verse 19. Now, this is talking to saved people alone. Okay? But this is showing how God would have man not only treat his fellow man, but also how to treat women. Their wives and women in general. It's applicable onto many uh, facets. Okay? That's why we're looking at it. Colossians chapter 3, verse 12 on to verse 19. Speaking true specifically to save people. Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, elect meaning that you went his way, not your own. You didn't boot the door out of the way and shout through the crack your lies and heresies and climb up some other way. No, no, no. The elect meaning you went to God on his terms, his way. 
Put on, therefore, as the elect of God, holy and beloved, bowels of mercies, kindness, humbleness of mind, meekness, long-suffering. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. If any man have a quarrel against any, even as Christ forgave you, so also do ye. Okay? Now, some people will come to verse 13 and say about, uh, try to twist that in with what Jesus said in the Sermon on the Mount and also before the death, burial, and resurrection, that if you don't forgive people, that you're not forgiven. That's in context for the kingdom of heaven. Uh, during the kingdom of heaven, which is all works, if you don't forgive someone, you're not going to be forgiven. That's in the kingdom of heaven. Today, in this dispensation, okay, where we are saved by grace through faith, your salvation isn't dependent on you if you forgive so-and-so. You, if you want to, you don't have to forgive someone. Your life is going to be a mess. Your walk with the Lord is going to be a mess. But salvifically, that doesn't affect your salvation. Okay? It doesn't. Why you would want to hold on to a grudge and not forgive someone? That's between you and the Lord. Okay? But remember... You, that's not rightly dividing the word of truth. Where our Lord says, if you don't forgive someone, neither will you for be, be forgiven. That's in context to the kingdom of heaven, not for us today. Remember that, okay? Verse 14. And above all these things, put on charity, which is the bond of perfectness. Charity is self-sacrifice. That's what charity truly is, Okay? And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, to the which also ye are called in one body, and be ye thankful. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, wisdom, fear of the Lord, teaching and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. How we as the church of the living God are to act uh, towards one another. And whatsoever ye do in word or deed, do all in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father by him. Verses 18 now, on to verse, what do we have? 19. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands, as it is fit in the Lord. Husbands, love your wives, and be not bitter against them. Be not bitter against them. Now, submitting, that doesn't mean that you forcibly submit your wife into submission. Like you forcibly do that. Rule her with a rod of iron. No. No. When the man of God is doing as the scriptures says for him, it ought not to be a problem for the woman of God to submit unto her husband. But now go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, we want verses 1 on to verse 7. Likewise, ye wives. Now this is talking about wives, yes. But see, it can be applied outside of marriage, meaning to be respectful unto women. Women bear children. Women are called to guide the house. Okay? To guide the house. Why do you think Satan went after Eve? Why do you think Satan is pushing feminism to destroy what God has created? Likewise, you wives, be in subjection to your own husbands, that if any obey not the word, they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives. Now see, this is specific here, because as we already looked at, for us men, okay, we looked at that in the Proverbs, Crossing dispensational lines. You got an angry, contentious, brawling woman who's in your face. Nah, 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 nah. Okay? Back off. Put distance. Go away. Separate yourself. Go hide in your room. Go hide in upstairs. Go in the basement. Take a walk. Ride a bike. Okay? But you women. Okay? You got a guy who's not living up to your par. So you're going to treat them like dirt? This is in context for saved people who are married. But a broader application. Okay? Broader application. You lost people. Okay? You need to get saved. But see, 
the scriptures doesn't support at all a woman usurping authority over a man but rather that they also may without the word be won by the conversation of the wives you save women sisters your husband being a jerk shut up go away from him let the Lord deal with him husbands your wife who is also a sister in Christ not doing not doing as she's supposed to do being a little lippy or whatever okay back off let the Lord deal with her verse 2 in 1st Peter 3 while they behold your chaste conversation coupled with fear them fearing the Lord a woman who feareth the Lord she shall be praised And a woman who truly fears the Lord isn't going to fear man, but rather will be honoring unto the Lord and being subject unto her husband. Out of fear of the Lord. Whose adorning let it not be that outward adorning of the plating of uh, of the plating of plating the hair and of wearing of gold or of putting on of apparel dressed up oh i mean hey there's okay there's nothing wrong with a woman looking good god forbid but let's continue reading but let it be the hidden man because woman was taken out of man of the heart and that which is not corruptible, even the ornament of a meek and quiet spirit, as a woman is supposed to have, which is in the sight of God of great price. Hmm. And how can a woman have a meek and quiet spirit when she's usurping authority over a man, being in his face, fighting in UFC? Come on. Come on. Come on. The hidden man of the heart. My wife is a beautiful woman because of who she is on the inside. Okay? Her outside matters very little to me as what is on the inside. How often have I run into these good looking women who are gorgeous on the outside, but inside they're full of vomit. They're, they're ugly on the inside. Sometimes I wish I were deaf and blind. Sometimes I wish I were blind. So, you know, the blind who say they get to know someone from the heart, not judging on the appearance. Something to think about. Verse 5. For after this manner in the old time, the holy women also who trusted in God. Key there. If you're not saved, none of this applies to you. For after this manner in old time, the holy women also who trusted in God adorned themselves being in, subject, being in subjection unto their own husbands. Even as Sarah obeyed Abraham, calling him Lord, whose daughters ye are as long as ye do well and are not afraid with any amazement. Likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them according to knowledge giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker vessel. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. Heirs together, weaker vessel. This verse 7 right there flies in the face of those new IFB guys who, you know, rule your wives with a rod of iron, a fist of iron. Yeah, yeah. They're the weaker vessel. But hey, weaker vessel, meaning they're not a man. But hey, weaker vessel, huh? Like I said, some of these UFC fighter women, they could probably whoop my rear end like that. Like that one gal I saw at the, at the bar that butted that guy. Blood all over. You know? But see, they're still the weaker vessel. Because you as woman were made to be the helpmate for the man. 
The man is the one to do the battle. The man is the one to fight for the truth. A woman can fight for truth, but not as a man fights. A woman is not supposed to do what a man does. The woman is supposed to be more soft, nourishing. That's why the woman is the one to guide the house. Yes, a man could guide the house without the woman, but not like a woman can, guiding the house as if a father and a mother. Two. There's nothing wrong with being feminine. There's nothing wrong with being a woman. It's beautiful. But see, Satan through the Jesuit order, through Roman Catholicism, and of course, Roman Catholicism, they worship Mary. <laughs> the cult of Mary. Okay? Go figure. Oh, we don't worship her. We venerate her. Okay, whatever you say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. The whole order has been messed up. And see, also, you go to 1 Timothy chapter 2. And this, this right here. 1 Timothy chapter 2. Now, like I said, we this gets discussed and we're, we're mentioning it here. You know, because like I said to, the, to you before, the attention span of people is of that of a gnat. Okay? And you'll see, if you watch The Woman of God and Cold, Very Cold, we go over the same things. Okay, we do. But I don't know if you're going to watch those. Because they're a little too long, huh? Boo-hoo. Bring a tear to my glass eye. But, see, what happens when women aren't doing as God designed you for. And as we as men are not doing as we are to do. And this right here in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verses 9 on to verse 15. In like manner also, that women adorn themselves in modest apparel, with shamefacedness and sobriety, not with broidered hair, or gold, or pearls, or costly array. Okay? A lot of people are, are will get a little too nitpicky on modest apparel for women. Modest apparel for women. Below the knee, okay, and, beg your pardon, cover up the cleavage. Don't, let, don't wear anything too tight to show off the form of your figure. Okay? Loose, airy. Okay? Simple. There are some out there who, 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 who take that seriously. They go a little too far with it. A little too far. Okay? A little too far. Modest apparel. Keep the, keep the cleavage covered. Beg your pardon. And at least, at least, you know, at least a good way below the knee. Okay? All right? And nothing too tight to show off your figure. Simple. Okay? But, verse 10, which becometh women professing godliness with good works, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. Now, that doesn't mean that she can't speak. What is it talking about? But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor to usurp authority over the man but to be in silence, to usurp authority over the man. And here you look on YouTube at these women preachers. <laughs> and see, a woman is to be of a meek and quiet, a quiet, quiet and meek countenance. Okay? But when you see these YouTube women preachers or women teaching, okay, it, it's a total opposite of what Scripture tells us. Okay? For Adam was first formed, then Eve. Okay, Eve was made for Adam, not Adam for Eve. Okay, And Adam was not deceived. Now, I mentioned this at the beginning. But the woman being deceived was in the transgression. What does that mean? Satan went to Eve, not to Adam. Hence, Adam was not deceived because Satan didn't go to Adam. Satan went to Eve. And Eve was deceived, was in the transgression. That's what verse 14 means. Okay? Verse 15. Notwithstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing, if they continue in the faith and charity and holiness with sobriety. And, you know, 
if they will learn it, let, let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 14. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Okay? Woman is not supposed to teach or usurp authority over the man. As you see here on YouTube, on YouTube, with these female preachers, pastors, you're heretics, you're liars. You're not supposed to be doing that. Okay? But 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 33 and verse 37. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all churches of the saints. A woman preacher, a woman who takes the lead role in the house over the man, it's confusion. God is not the author of confusion. God is, it's very simple. Man, or God, man, woman, children. Again, feminazis. God, woman, children, pet, man. No, no, no. Okay? Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak, but they are commanded to be under obedience, as also saith the law. Not supposed to teach. Okay? Not supposed to be blurting things out. You know, it's like, you know, you're in a scripture study, and you're with your wife. She could, it's like, go to you. It's like, what, what does that mean? It's like, oh, oh that, that's what that, that means. That's not talking about that. That's talking about usurping authority. Okay? It's, a, it's an issue of authority. It's an issue of authority. Man is to be the authority over the woman. Okay? And when the man does it according to Scripture, not according to Satan, it's an honor, it's a glory. Verse 35. And if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home, for it is a shame for a woman to speak in the church. What? Came the word of God, God out from you, or came it unto you only? Verse 37. If any man think himself to be a prophet or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Okay? The woman is to be in subjection. Within the gathering together of the saints, the woman is not supposed to be the, the preacher or the teacher. Okay? All right? And let them learn at home from their husbands, yes. In the spur of the moment, her going, on, hey, what, the, what, what does that mean really quickly? It's like, oh, that's, you see that? That's what he's talking No. But usurping of authority. What you see here on YouTube with a lot of these female preachers and teachers, but also in another sense, in a broader sense too, about the women that leave the home just like Jezebel who manipulated her husband. Ahab, okay? And Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5, just one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 22, verse 5. Just one verse. Deuteronomy chapter 22. If I can get there. <laughs> verse 5. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto a man, Dressed like a man. This is talking about actual physical clothing. Yes. Hold on. Neither shall a man put on a woman's garment. For all that do that, for all that do so, are abomination unto the Lord thy God. Drag queens, men dressing up as women, women dressing up as men. Absolutely. But also, I want to throw this at you. The woman shall not wear that which pertaineth unto the man. Dressing up as a man, going out as a man, making a living, ruling the house, usurping the authority, and the woman and the man taking the role of the woman, doing uh, guiding the house, reversing the role. Okay. Yes, that is talking about actual physical clothing, but to instruct us in righteousness, there's a little bit more to it. Okay. I don't know if any of you remember, I hope you don't, there was a Hollywood movie called Mr. Mom. Diane Keaton and some other person were exactly this. She took the head of the man and went and made the living while the man took the wife's role. Very funny movie, right? No, it was tragic. It was deplorable. 
Let's see. Now, yes, while well, Deuteronomy 22, verse 5 is specifically talking about garment, it's a little deeper than that for our instruction in righteousness. Go to 1 Timothy now, chapter 3. 1 Timothy, chapter 3. 1 Timothy, chapter 3. 1 Timothy, chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 13. This is a true saying. If a man desire the office of a bishop, he desireth a good work, a man. A bishop then must be blameless, the husband of one wife, one wife, one man, one woman, the way it was intended from the beginning, vigilant, sober, of good behavior, given to have hospitality, apt to teach. Good behavior. Now this is talking about bishops and deacons. But also in a, in a broader sense of basic behavior of those of us of the church of the living God of man towards others. Okay? Yes, this is specifically talking about bishops and deacons. Yes, but the teaching is that we as man ought to be uh, putting this forth in an everyday sense anyway. Not just in bishops and deacons. Okay? Remember, we are ambassadors for Christ. Having the ministry of reconciliation and the word of reconciliation, anyone who is genuinely saved, born again, converted of the church of the living God, ought to be putting forth these things. Verse 3. Not given to wine. No striker. Not given a filthy lucre. Not greedy, not wanting money, but patient, not a brawler, not covetous. No, no striker. The audacity of some saying that, as these Christians, that sometimes you got to put your wife in line by smacking her. The Lord rebuke you. That's heresy. That's satanic. One that ruleth well his own house, having his children in subjection with all gravity, if you have children. Paul didn't have children. What do you say to that? For if a man know not how to rule his own house, how shall he take care of the church of God? Not a novice. Lest being lifted up with pride, he fall into the condemnation of the devil. Oh, those, oh, say, not a novice like those who work a wine press. Yeah. Moreover, he must have a good report of them which are without. A good name is rather to be chosen than loving silver. Lest he fall into reproach and the snare of the devil. Why do you think the enemies... Try so hard to slander people's names. Verse 8. Likewise must the deacons be grave, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy of filthy lucre, holding the mystery of the faith in a pure conscience. And let these also first be proved. Then let them use the office of a deacon being found blameless. Even so must their wives be grave, not slanderers, sober, faithful in all things. Yes. Yes. Let the deacons be the husbands of one wife, ruling their children and their own house as well. For they that have used the office of a deacon will purchase to themselves a good degree and great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. Now, this is specifically talking about bishops and deacons, yes. But how else can this be applied onto those of you, of the church of God, in your daily life, with dealings with people? Do unto others as you would have them do unto you? And Titus chapter 3? Titus chapter 3, just one in verses 1 and 3. Put them in mind to be subject to principalities and powers, to obey magistrates, to be ready to every good work, to speak evil of no man, to be no brawlers, 
but gentle, showing all meekness unto all men. For we ourselves also were sometimes foolish, and this we have to remember, disobedient, deceived, serving divers lusts and pleasures, living in malice and envy, hateful and hating one another. Hateful and hating one another. And we have to remember, brethren, that we sometimes, you know, you don't like people much, you got to remember that you were a people at one time. God is not for the abuse of women. Nor God is definitely not for women usurping authority over men and abusing men verbally and doing whatever. It works both ways. Okay? It works both ways. God isn't for it. God isn't for it. God has a special purpose for women. And when a woman doesn't go along with that purpose, there you go. Ephesians chapter 5. Church of the living God, brethren, sisters, let us remember these things. And those of you who are lost, you, you need to get saved. The only one who can save you is Jesus Christ. Let us reason together, you and I. Okay? Ephesians chapter 5. Be ye therefore followers of God as dear children, and walk in love, a love of the truth. As Christ also hath loved, past tense, us, and hath given himself for us an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling savor. Us. Those who are of the church of the living God, saved, born again, converted. This is for saved people. But if you're lost, listen. But fornication, relations outside of the context of marriage, whether it be physical or spiritual, and all uncleanness or covetousness, let it not be once named among you as become a saint's. Neither filthiness, nor foolish talking, nor jesting, which are not convenient, but rather giving of thanks. Foolish talking, jesting, calling women um, female dogs, garden tools, and stuff like that. Sexual innuendos. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater? Covetous is idolatry. Yeah. What's the idol they're coveting and worshiping? Themselves that they look at in the mirror. How many of you are your own idol? You should be as God's own good and evil, right? Yes. For this you know, that no whoremonger, nor unclean person, nor covetous man, who is an idolater, hath any inheritance in the kingdom of Christ and of God. Let no man deceive you with vain words, for because of these things cometh the wrath of God upon the children of disobedience. Be not ye therefore partakers with them. You are not to be like the world. God is not okay with you doing things of the world. Remember, you hear this truth, you hear the truth of the gospel, and you reject it. You are a child of wrath. You are a child of disobedience. God's wrath is for you. God's love is not for you. God's love is for you at Calvary. You have to go there on his terms, not your own. You don't boot the door out of the way and shout your lies through the crack, climbing up some other way, a thief and a robber and a liar. No. You go to him on his terms, not your own. For ye were sometimes darkness, but now ye are, but now are ye light in the Lord. Walk as children of light. Walk as children of light, according to the scriptures. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. Oh, excuse me. For the fruit of the Spirit in all goodness and righteousness and truth. Proving what is acceptable unto the Lord. And have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness 
but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. Yeah, like, oh, I've slipped and fell down the stairs. I, I slipped on a banana peel and I uh, hit my head on the uh, end of the table. The shower thing fell and hit me. Yeah. But all things that are approved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore he saith, Awake thou that sleepest, and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Hold your place here. Of course, John chapter 3. <laughs> John chapter 3. John chapter 3. <laughs> Verses 19 on to verse 21 in John chapter 3. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. For everyone that doeth evil hateth the light. Neither cometh to the light, lest his deeds should be reproved. And the light is, of course, our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father. But he that doeth truth cometh to the light, that his deeds may be made manifest that they are wrought in God. But you also got to remember, you also got to remember, in 2 Corinthians, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, 2 Corinthians chapter 11, verses 13 on to verse 15. For such are false apostles, deceitful workers, transforming themselves into the apostles of Christ. And no marvel, for Satan himself is transformed into an angel of light. Therefore it is no great thing if his ministers also be transformed as the ministers of righteousness, whose end shall be according to their works. If someone is truly of Christ, what they do is going to line up with the scriptures. And those who claim to be Christian, claim to be for Christ, yet speak contrary to the scriptures, you shall know them by their fruits. And see, you are to have a, a perfect standard that you may judge betwixt the two. Okay? You are to judge. You are to judge according to the scriptures. Okay? Okay? God is a spirit. And how are you to know the difference between the two unless you have a perfect standard that you can judge them from? Remember that. Ephesians chapter 5, picking up at verse 15. See then that ye walk circumspectly, not as fools who say in their heart there is no God, but as wise, those who fear the Lord, redeeming the time because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. Romans chapter 12, verses 1 unto 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay? And be not drunk with wine, wherein is excess, but be filled with the Spirit. Capital S. Speaking to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord, giving thanks always for all things unto God and the Father in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Giving thanks always for all things, good, bad, and indifferent. Submitting yourselves one to another in the fear of God. Wives, submit yourselves unto your own husbands as unto the Lord. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the church, and he is the Savior of the body. God, man, woman, children. Right here. Therefore, as the church is subject unto Christ, so let the wives be be to their own husbands in some things that they agree with. No, in everything. 
and everything. But what if it's against the scriptures? That's a different story. Uh, if your husband wants you to break the law or go against the scriptures, that's a different story. That's a different story. This is in context of a godly couple, a couple of the church of the living God. Okay? All right? Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ also loved the church and gave himself for it, died for it that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. How many of you out there are prepared to die for your wives, if need be? That he might present it to himself a glorious church, not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that it should be holy and without blemish. See, this is what the man of God is supposed to do unto his wife. And if we as men of God would do this. So ought men to love their wives as their own bodies. He that loveth his wife loveth himself. Yes. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. My wife is my own bones and my flesh. I'm not going to smack her. I'm not going to tear her apart with my mouth. Okay? You women. You are bone of his bones, flesh of his flesh. Okay? You're not supposed to be contentious or brawling with him. And if you guys are angry at each other, work it out. Work it out. Okay? For no man ever yet hated his own flesh, but nourisheth and cherisheth it, even as the Lord the church. You know, if you were to look at your wife, your spouse, as your own body, wow. Wow. You know, your me time that you got, it ought to be we time. Hmm? For we are members of his body, for we are members of his body, of his flesh and of his bones. For this cause shall a man leave his father and mother and shall be joined unto his wife and they too shall be one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. Nevertheless, let every one of you in particular so love his wife even as himself and the wife see that she reverence her husband. And that's it in a nutshell. See, through predictive programming, movies, Hollywood, news, sports, entertainment, whatever, Satan has taught so many of you that woman is to be seen as an object, as a possession. And you women, Satan has taught you to despise your husbands, to despise men, that you can manipulate him like Jezebel. See, it's it's both sides openly saying don't abuse women but yet at the same time lifting up women to rebel against man don't, haven't you figured it out that you need to be saved haven't you figured that out yet haven't you figured it out that your life is nothing without Jesus Christ oh you think you got it made right now huh what good is that going to do you in the day of judgment there, son? Hmm? And those of you who justify yourselves for abusing a woman, you ain't a man. You're a little boy. You're a coward. You're a wimp. You're a weakling. Every single man, almost, virtually, every single man that I have ever encountered, and I've encountered a few, who have abused women physically? <laughs> They're cowards. They're absolute cowards. Every single one of them that I've... Not every single one. Not every single one. There are those out there that will feel guilt, but then again, they blame the woman. It's her fault, right? No. You have no rule over your own spirit? We... we 
Just search the scriptures. What do you do? Walk away. Don't give place to the devil. It's the Lord's job to recompense with an S. The noun, verb, okay? It's the Lord's job. You got a wife who's being contentious to you? Back off. Hey, the Lord's going to deal with you. You got a husband who's being out of line with you? Back off. It's like, honey, you better be careful. Like I said, I, I saw this recently. Neighbor of ours. Who I'm sure if I asked, it's like, oh, I fell, or something hit me, or something. Or the worst is when a woman has been brainwashed, I deserved it. Wow. Wow. No. No. That's going to be it for this video. Got other videos coming, of course. Um, but that's going to be it for this video. Um, be aware. God is not for the abuse of women. God loves women. He created woman for man. Women have a special place, a special function, a special duty in the eyes of God. And Satan is the one who is against you to raise you women up against men. That's not of God, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father of the Holy Scriptures. No. That is going to be it for this video. I hope this might help some of you or answer some questions or even rebuke or approve some of you who have your problems with women. So, thank you for watching this if you do. Please pray for us. Uh, we got to get that notice of intent in this week, and we will. And um, please continue to pray for us. We love you. Thank you so much for watching this if you do. We'll see you in the next video.